What's up guys, welcome to Visualization. Nestor Adrian Sen here again. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use XLOOKUP. Some of you might know that XLOOKUP is a powerful Excel function and it's worth learning if you are a data analyst. So, are you ready? Let's do this. For today's tutorial, I have here three different points. The first one, of course, we're going to learn more about this powerful function, the XLOOKUP function. The second point here is about the syntax, really, really important topic here. And finally, guys, as always, I have two examples here to put everything into practice. So let's go to the first point. So what is XLOOKUP? Five different points here. XLOOKUP is a new Excel function introduced in 2019. It replaces the VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, and also lookup functions in Excel. It allows you to find things in a table or range by row. It's available in Excel 365 only. This is critical, my friends. If you are using a prior version, right, maybe Excel 2019, 2016, who knows, you might not be able to use this powerful function. Please keep this in mind, okay? And finally here, the XLOOKUP can look up data to the right or left of lookup values. This is also a powerful, powerful statement here. If we compare this with the VLOOKUP, for example, with a VLOOKUP function, we can only use, we can look up data to the right. If we do it towards the left, we're gonna have issues, right? We're gonna get an error. But with this function, that error is over. No more errors, okay? And now let's go to the next point. So let's learn about the syntax. This is also a critical part here, okay? Remember that this tutorial is just an introduction. We're gonna take a quick look at the syntax here. This function has six different parts, six components, right? So the first three are required and the last three are optional. And you guys can see here as well, more description about these components, right? For example, just to take a quick look at this, the lookup value, this is the value to search for, the first component here. The second component, the lookup array, the array or range to search, the return array, the array or range to return. And also you can have more options here. This is also a good one. If the value is not found, please return something different, right? Maybe some text there. We will see an example about that as well. And then you also have the, the last two components here, the match mode, search mode, but you can read it. Now guys, let's take a look at the examples, okay? Like I said before, guys, this is just an introduction. I have two questions here. The first question is, look up four different dates in a range and then return the stock price and volume. And here are the dates, I have four different dates here. And then the last question that we have here is find the stock price for the first and last dates within each year since inception. So just to give you a quick idea about the data. So we're gonna be using Apple's data and that's free data. You can go to Yahoo Finance and find the data there. All right, so now let's go to Excel. All right, so here we are in Excel and this is Apple's data. I'm talking about the company. So a couple of things here before we get started with the exercise. I already added a new column here. It's called year and this is basically year from the date column. I'm grabbing this year from this column, right? I'm applying the text function there. And also I changed the name of this column here. It's called stock price. So now let's solve the first question here. So the first question is to find stock price, this one right here, and also volume. So let's add here price real quick. Okay, there you go. So how do we do this? Of course, we wanna use the XLOOKUP function. Let's do that. Equal here, XLOOKUP, there you go. So the lookup value, it's gonna be this cell right here. Okay, comma, and now the lookup array we're gonna be using the date column. So let's do that. Let's select every single value 
within this column. And now we need to lock this information. How do we do that? If you are using Windows, you might want to use F4. But if you're using a Mac, like I'm doing right now, I'm going to use Fn and then F4 at the same time. There you go. What else? The return array. So we are looking for stock price. So we need to reference this column right here. The same thing here. Let's select everything here. There you go. And now we need to lock this information as well. Perfect. Now, remember the first three components are required. And then the last three are optional. But let's do something really interesting here. What happens if we don't find the value? If we don't find the value for a specific date, so let's add some text here. So the text is going to be not found. How about that? Because this is text, we need to add quotation marks. Comma here. And of course, we are looking for the exact match here. This should be zero. There you go. And now we can close parentheses if we want. There you go. Let's hit enter and let's see what happens. All right, let's see. Let's drag this down. There you go, my friends. See? So for this date, we don't have any value. And that's why we are getting this result. Because that's what we tell the formula, right? So if you don't have any value, please add this text right here, not found. Now, if we want to find volume, we can do the same thing. And let's copy the formula real quick. Remember, guys, we are not lazy here. We are trying to be efficient, right? So let's copy the formula here and let's make a couple of changes. Remember the lookup values, they are right here. And then we are looking for volume. So let's drag this to the right. And now we can leave it as is for the remaining components, right? If we don't find any value, please give us this text and then we are looking for the exact match. Let's hit enter and see what happens, okay? Boom, same results here. So let's drag this down. Perfect. There you go, my friends. That's how it works. What do you think? This is a powerful, powerful function. And then you can edit this if you want. Remember, this should be... We can add right here a thousand separator. Okay, so let's double check this date real quick because we are looking for December 25th, 1985, okay? So let's do that. Remember, we don't have values for that according to the results, right? See right there? We have information for every single date, almost every single date. And then the 25th, there's no information, right? We have the 23rd, 24th, and then the 25th, nothing. That's why we're not getting any values. So this means that the formula is working properly. So now let's remove these filters, okay? There you go. So the formula is working properly. Now, guys, let's solve the last question. So the last question was to identify the first date stock price. In other words, the stock price for the first date and then the stock price for the last date for each year. If you guys remember, I already created this column right here, year. What I'm gonna do here is the following. I'm gonna copy this, okay? Control C, and then I'm gonna paste this here. Right click here, paste special, and then just values because I don't want to have formulas here. The next step here is to delete duplicated information. Let's go to data here and then remove duplicates. It's right there. So of course we only care about column and right here and then let's hit OK and let's see what happens. About 10,000 duplicate values found. Okay, boom. So now we have just unique years, right? Okay, so now let's start playing with this function again. Remember guys, we are using the XLOOKUP function here. Equal here, XLOOKUP, there you go. The lookup value should be year. The lookup array, for this particular case, this should be 
this column right here and we need to select every single value within this column and then we need to log these values and then the return array we are looking for the first date stock price which is this column right here remember that we can reference values to the left with this function if we were using the VLOOKUP function that wouldn't have been possible because we only reference to the right with that function but now we can do that let's select all the values here and then let's lock these values as well there you go so something really important here guys to be aware of remember that we are looking for the first date value for the first date stock price right and also we are looking for the last date stock price so this means that we need to organize this data from a to z before we do the analysis before we apply the xlookup function this is already organized right here because it's going from from the lowest number to the highest number here from the lowest date to the highest date right it's december right here 12th and then it ends on december 31st for 1980 right and the same thing is happening for the other years here so it's starting with the lowest date and then it ends with the highest date for a specific year so that's key guys that we need to have in mind okay having that as a reference let's keep uh, working on this formula here if we don't have any value let's add some text here as well not found okay now match mode remember we are looking for the exact match this should be zero and now here's the thing remember we are looking for the first date right for the first date we are looking for the stock price of the first date so you need to select right here one now we are ready to close parentheses and let's hit enter there you go my friends now we can drag this double click here if we want boom perfect we have right here the stock price for the first date for each year so now we can do the same for the last date stock price Control c Control v right there and then we need to make here a couple of changes remember the lookup value should be year here right and then guys the other component should be the same but the last one right here this is going to change because we are looking for the last date value remember we need to look for this value right here for the last one so we need to select right here minus one and now guys this should be giving us the right results let's hit enter and see what happens boom there you go double click here perfect if we want to find delta here we can do that as well this is just something additional that we have here you don't have to do that there you go now you can say let's double check these values okay for 1980 the stock price for the first day that we have available ends with 51 let's see that see right here ends with 51 perfect so now let's take a look at the stock price for the last day for 1980 it ends with 87 right here so let's double check that remember we are looking for this year and it ends with 87 perfect so this is working perfectly fine my friends perfectly perfectly fine so what do you think do you find this helpful i find this helpful this is definitely a game changer and i hope you found this helpful as well so now let's go back to our presentation and see what else we have there okay all right guys that was it like i said i hope you found this helpful if so please give me a thumbs up share with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss anything thank you guys and see you in my next tutorial